Hey everyone, this video is how I became a software engineer with no computer science degree and no prior experience. Below I have timestamps for all of the topics I will be talking about. The three most important things are doing courses, number two, they are doing projects, and number three is getting an internship. So I will talk about those three main things. Okay, topic number one. I think everyone should start by doing two main courses in computer science. The first course that uh, one should take is in software construction. Now, you can do software construction online, which I have linked below, or you can do it in a university um, of your choice. First thing that software construction will teach you how to do is it will pick a language for you to learn from. So um, typically my advice for this is that language does not matter. Um, it doesn't matter if you're doing Java or C++ or C Sharp or Python, but there are rankings for how easy some of the languages are. Python being the easiest language to learn, then I would say it is closely followed by Java, and then there are some new languages like Kotlin, etc. And I think C++, C Sharp, and R are especially more difficult to learn because of how difficult the syntax is. So my recommendation is that the coding language does not matter, but if you had a choice of coding language, I would pick either Python and Java as your starter language in your software construction course. And I will link the software construction courses below. Why is a software construction course important? It's because it will teach you the fundamentals of how any program, any website, or anything is built, which is through object-oriented programming. Now, object-oriented programming will teach you about classes, it will teach you about objects, it will teach you about how objects have methods and how they can be used for your particular object when you are coding. The second course I recommend after you have a language under your belt is data structures and algorithms. So why is data structures and algorithms an essential course you have to take? Well, number one, it will teach you uh, the types of data structures that you can use for any coding language. For example, any coding language will allow you to use lists, array lists. It'll teach you how to use hash sets. It'll teach you how to use dictionaries. So any, um, any language will have these types of data structures that you need to have. And essentially, these data structures will allow you to do certain things, such as sorting. How do you sort a list of objects? Um, how do you uh, use a depth first search? How do you use a breadth first search? So data structures and algorithms is absolutely essential. Uh, number one, because it'll give you the foundations for what data structures um, are being used in coding languages and what algorithms are being used. But third, most importantly, they are especially used for interviews because most interviews will give a data structures and algorithms uh, interview lead code question and you need to have that foundation before you move on to lead code, which is preparation for coding interviews. Okay, moving on into step number two. The way to enhance your knowledge in any language and in understanding more about classes, objects, and methods is by doing a coding project. Now, a really easy coding project is to build a website, any website, um, and my recommendation is to just build a static website, and I will link below using Gatsby and the hosting website that I use, which is Netlify. Um, that's why I recommend what, how you would get started in building a website, and that will really help you consolidate your knowledge um, from like an end-to-end -end experience, and will also allow you to learn more about how to use IDEs such as IntelliJ as well as GitHub. Now, the second uh, thing that I recommend is uh, doing leak code. And leak code comes directly from data structures and algorithms, where after you've learned these data structures and algorithms, you want to put it to the test by doing leak code questions. And uh, essentially, a lot of times people give these list of common questions asked by fan companies or common questions asked by software engineering companies regarding which leak code questions are most commonly asked. And I think they're good, but the problem with doing that is, is that they're all really new questions, each of them being very different. You might get stuck on like question one, and then you go to question two, it's a completely different question, you'll get stuck on that, and you won't see the patterns for how to do lead code questions. So my recommendation is to go to Sean Prashad's website below, where he has like a systematic uh, level of lead code questions you should do, where he does like, where, where you, for example, the first five questions are maybe like about arrays, and then he'll go into like the next topic and the next topic, and that way you'll understand the patterns for lead code. Um, instead of just going straight into doing different questions every single time. And it's also ranked by difficulty, which I think is really, really helpful. Another really useful resource is grokking the coding interview. You have to spend money for that though. So there is a non-paid option for Sean Prashad or using a paid option, which is grokking the coding interview. So those two things are essentially extensions of software construction and data structures and algorithms. Okay, so up to this point, 
you have done the two courses and you've done one coding project and I recommend 50 lead code questions, 40 easy, maybe 10 medium. After you've gone to this range, you're not ready to apply for internships. Now, prior to this, I would say the first two steps you can do voluntarily and although difficult, they're doable because, hang on a second, let me move closer, like, they're doable because um, you can find like the online courses yourself and you can do the lead code yourself and it's just about like motivating yourself to do, motivating yourself to do it. Now, the problem with internships is, is that you need validation from a company to say, oh, we want your services. And that's why it becomes a little bit tricky. I cannot describe how difficult the first internship was, was to get for me. So basically, I didn't have a computer science degree and I had like I had like worked up to this point where I did the 50 legal questions, I did my own website, and I did those two classes. And I was trying to find an internship. And for eight months, I could not find an internship. I applied everywhere and no replies. And I couldn't like, I just couldn't get an internship. And I think it most likely had to like do with the fact that I still had like a neuroscience degree and things like that. So essentially, uh, in the end, I actually got like a referral from a friend from a computer science program who pre who did an internship last summer with this company and then they ended up doing an interview for me and then I ended up getting the spot. So by any means necessary, try and get your first internship. That's what I would recommend. Getting an internship is that like third stage Rasengan from like Naruto where like you got like the spinny stuff and then you got like the other spinny stuff and then now you have to combine it into a ball. And that's why um, the third step for internships is like a little bit tricky. So. If you don't have a degree, my recommendation is that you could try and apply for summer internships, which usually happen in the fall. And my rec like the first internship is, is really tough. I have, to, I have to say, it took me like eight months to get my first internship. It's incredibly, incredibly difficult and you're gonna get rejected a lot. But like you could try and just go for it, like getting your internship by yourself by just applying. Um, so here's where like the education piece comes in. So basically, most computer science programs and most masters of computer science programs have a co-op program where they can guarantee you an internship. Same thing with bootcamp. They can like guarantee you an internship if you finish their course stuff. Why is this important? Because like I said, the first internship is really, 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 really hard to get. And that is like almost like I would say make or break for any software engineering career. So my advice is that if you don't feel confident in getting your first internship on your own, my recommendation is to take either a bootcamp that will guarantee you an internship, which I, have, I haven't really done, um, or is what I would suggest, try and do maybe like a part-time computer science degree, either an undergrad or a master's, and make sure that they can guarantee you through the co-op program in an internship. Um, now, more, more than likely, your first internship is gonna be at maybe like a startup or a smaller company, which I would argue is actually good because then you get to work on like a ticket system, which is basically a bunch of engineers and a bunch of tickets you have to do, and then you can pick the like ticket that you wanna do, and they're like sort of small, like two week sprints, and then you do them, and then you get feedback from it, and you'll learn a lot from that internship. So essentially, if you're not confident in getting an internship on your own, this is where I would recommend either getting a degree or going to some bootcamp that will guarantee you through the co program to get a uh, internship. And um, I will link below some of the programs that I recommend that you possibly consider. Now, once you've gotten your first internship, that's when the floodgates open up because basically companies work like this. They care about your internship experience, they care about your project experience, and then they care about your um, like schooling and education and stuff like that. So once you have your first internship, it becomes so much easier to get other internships. So once you have that first internship, that's why I recommend you start going for the fan companies. That means Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, any of the companies that are not going under hiring freeze right now, you can go for them. So once you start going for them, um, my recommendation is continue to study lead code because you're gonna get, be asked some lead code medium questions at this point. And um, yeah, try to pass those interviews. What I would do, my recommendation at that stage is try and figure out um, in terms of the process, what's the most difficult. So for example, if you're not getting inter any interviews, then the problem is maybe your education and projects. So maybe then you need to go and like go do like a part-time degree and, or like try and like go to some program that will guarantee you an internship. If you are getting interviews, which is most likely what will happen after you get your first internship and you're not passing the interviews, that means you don't have enough lead code practice. So you need to practice lead code and try and get it up to like the 200s or 300s, like questions done. So it becomes really clear after you start applying whether you are failing at the resume phase or if you are failing at the interview phase. That's why it's really important to apply right away. 
Once you get an internship at a fan company, then that's your golden ticket to getting roles in many different companies for entry level. And, and also the point of doing these internships is that there's a high chance for you to get a return offer from the company that you're going to. So my recommendation is apply for the companies you want to go to and then repeat the cycle until you get a return offer from a company that you really want to stay at. To reiterate the steps, number one, you want to do the courses to get, help you get started. Number two, you want to do projects in LeetCode. And number three, which is the toughest part, is you want to try and get the first and that second internship. And you want to do that by any means necessary, whether it is in the beginning, um, applying by yourself, or later on, if you feel like it doesn't that doesn't work, then trying to get that part-time degree and doing the co-op program to, so that you can get the internship. Now, one thing to note is, is that to make sure that this is not as risky for you, I think at every single step, you can still keep your previous degree or your previous job. For example, while I'm learning, you can still do your previous job. While I am doing LeetCode, you can do your previous job. Um, and even if you can't get that first internship, you can still do your pre you can still do your previous job and do a number of these part-time masters or undergrad degrees that will give you a co-op program to help you get that first internship. And even when I did my first internship, I still did not uh, quit my previous program because you can still take a leave of absence to do your uh, to do that first internship. My recommendation is wait until you get a return offer from a fan company or the company that you want to go to before you sort of quit your previous degree, uh, sorry, your, your previous career. And that way you will have the best sort of risk control. There's a lot of like degrees that will do part-time. And as long as you do that, um, it will help you have a seamless transition where you're not sa sacrificing your other career to um, do something that you think you're not sure 100% that you want to transition into. Okay, that's pretty much it. These three steps, try them. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment, subscribe below, and I will try to answer any questions. I will answer any and all questions that are uh, given to me below, and um, hopefully that helps. Peace.